Body Pukuru Pony Language Lesson 1. Okay, this is the Pony alphabet. Um, and these are the vowels of Pony. Uh, the first vowel will be the uh sound, as in the English word above. And in the Pony example, usku, meaning one. Uh, this next sound <clears throat> will be the ah sound, as in the English word father. In the Pawnee example, body, meaning Pawnee. The next vowel sound, uh, this SB only means in South Bend only, <clears throat> is the E, eh, E eh sound, as in English pet. In the Pawnee example, et kichu meaning milk. <clears throat> the next vowel sound is the A sound, and again, this is South Bend only, as in the English word fiancé. In the Pawnee example, de saru, meaning chief. This next vowel sound is the I sound, as in English pit. In Pawnee, pitku, meaning two. The next vowel sound is is E as in English machine in the Pawnee example pita meaning man the next vowel sound <clears throat> can be between U uh and U uh. um, just like you could pronounce this English word root or root in the Pawnee example kuh kuh meaning pig and this final vowel sound in Pawnee is ooh always. Um, in the English uh, word rude, in the Pawnee example, usu, uh, meaning hair. Okay, so for the long vowels, which is what we're calling these long vowels, um, it's represented by this little diacritic mark that we're calling a rooftop. So as you see, a uh versus a, uh, a uh versus a, uh, i uh versus e, u uh versus u. Uh. Every time you see that rooftop, it's a what we call a long vowel. Okay, continuing on with the Pawnee alphabet, uh, these are the consonants of Pawnee, both uh, Skeety dialect and South Bend dialect, exact same. Okay, so this first sound, is the P sound. <clears throat> However, it's not like um, an English P and it's not like an English B. Some people will hear this sound as a P, some people will hear it as a B, but it's somewhere in between there. So like in this English word, spot. Um, when you say that word, it's not like if you said the English word pot. Um, there's no breath of air coming out and so that's the difference between the Pawnee sound and the English sound. So in this Pawnee example, pita, pita, <clears throat> meaning man. Again, notice it's not quite a P and it's not quite a B. It's somewhere in between. Now the same thing for this next sound, T. Some folks might hear it as a T. Some might hear it more as a D. And for the same reasons, um, there's a little puff of air that comes out that uh, differentiates the two sounds. So we have this English word stop. Notice again, if I say top and stop, there's very slight differences in the way that's pronounced. So we have this Pawnee example, do it, do it, meaning three. <clears throat> now the same thing for this next sound, K. Some folks might hear it as a K, some might hear it as a, a G sound. And it's neither. It's somewhere in between again. So we have this English word, uh, skate. Now if I said the English uh, name Kate, again, that's a slightly different pronunciation than the K in skate. <clears throat> we have this Pawnee example, uh, Kati, meaning black. Again, notice it's not quite the K of English or the G of English. It's somewhere in between. This next sound, we have um, this C with this little diacritic. 
on top of it, and this represents the ch sound, as in this English word uh, catch, and in the Pawnee example, chuchix, meaning spider. Moving on, we have this uh, next sound represented by the letter C, but it's the uh, t t sound, as in the English word cat, and in the Pawnee example, eat or it, meaning potato, potatoes. Moving on, we have this S sound, <clears throat> just like similar to English, as in this English word sit, and in this Pawnee example, sakuru meaning sun or day. We move along to the next sound, um, H. It's similar to English as well, as in this English word hit, and in this Pawnee example, bahuru, meaning owl. Moving on, and okay, this is where um, the Pawnee R is unlike the uh, R of English. Uh, this R in Pawnee represents um, this sound that we hear in the English word butter. It's a very quick sound. Um, and then in this Pawnee example, they saw to, meaning chief. Some folks might hear this, uh, this R letter as a D sound or an L sound or an N sound. Okay, moving on to the next sound. <clears throat> we have this uh, letter W. And it's very similar to the English W, uh, as in this English word wall. And in this Pawnee example, weiss, meaning hurry. And then finally we have this little apostrophe, <coughs> which represents a glottal stop or a voice catch. Um, the nearest we could get to it with an English equivalent is the expression uh-oh. Notice there's a quick voice catch between uh and o. Oh. And we have this Pawnee uh, example, aka ah, to show that, meaning oh or my or oh my in Pawnee. Okay, lesson one. Um, we're going to start our basic greeting and introductions. So this first one, um, this is what we'll be learning in lesson one. And we'll give you the meaning, it, the meaning of these phrases and the answers in the next few slides. We're going to go through the pronunciation. This first one, Jikstit Gadasbury. Jikstit Gadasbury. And then this next one is Jikstit Gadasku. Jikstit Gadasku. Okay, the responses to this one. Um, we only put South Bend and Skidi. The only difference between this one is this first word right here. These two roots makes this what this is what makes it. South Bend, this is what makes it skeety. So we'll say, Ahu, jig stick, duck buddy. Ahu, jig stick, duck buddy. Or we can say, How, jig stick, duck goo. How, jig stick, duck goo. Another response would be, Gaki, jig stick, gawk up buddy. Gaki, jig stick, gawk up buddy. Or we could say, Gaki, Chikstit kakakku. Kaki, chikstit kakakku. Okay, so we're moving on down. This is for South Bend speakers only. Kirike dasasa. Kirike dasasa. And this next pronunciation is for Skidi speakers. Now you could either say Kiriki rasasa or you could say Kiki rasasa. Means the same. So we're going to response, um, I'm going to use my name. So as you, so both South Bend and Skidi will um, respond the same. Dr. Sir Taylor. Dr. Sir Taylor. So we're going down. South Bend again. Kirike da Sakita. Kirike da Sakita. Or for Skidi. It'll be Kirike Aka. Kiriki Rasakita. Or Kiki Rasakita. So, with our responses, we'll use, we'll just use body, meaning pony. First response Tatakita body. Tatakita body. Or, if 
if that one, you go to the easier one by saying body de, body de. Okay, these are just a few tricks that can help you with uh, pronouncing Pawnee words. I know it can be tough, especially when you're first learning. So, um, here's one good thing to know. Pawnee syllables begin with the consonant most of the time. One of the only exceptions to this is that the first syllable of a word can begin with the vowel. So, above you'll see the consonants, P, T, K, the ch sound, the ts, the S, H, R, W, and then the glottal. And then for our vowels, you'll see the uh, the ah uh, with the rooftop, the S eh sound, the A eh with the rooftop. Now that's the sound, not the letter. The I, eh, the E eh sound with the rooftop, which is the I with the rooftop. And then the U, uh, and then the U, uh, the U with the rooftop. So, <clears throat> Pawnee syllables can begin, or can end, with either a consonant or a vowel. So when a Pawnee syllable ends with the vowel, your your all your sounds here, um, then the next syllable, it has to start with the consonant. So it has to start with P, T, K, Ch, Ts, the S, H, R, W, and the glottal. So as an example of this, let's look at the phrase, Kirike Rasasa, what's your name? And let's break that into syllables. So the little periods are going to represent the syllable breaks. So we have kirike rasasa. Now let's break it into syllables. We have ki, and then we have de, and then we have ke, and then we have da, sa, sa. So that's that phrase broken into syllables. Notice that it starts with the consonant for all of them, and for all of these it actually ends with the vowel, except the very last syllable has a glottal. Okay, so when a Pawnee syllable ends with the consonant, this means that another consonant um, will start the next syllable. So as an example of this, let's look at the phrase Chikstit Tutku, meaning I am well, and let's break that into syllables. So we have this phrase Chikstit Tutku, and we're going to break this into syllables. Okay, so let's break this first word into syllables. Chicks, and then Dit. And then we have da, and then we have gu. So notice that the first word ends with the consonant s, or the first syllable ends with the consonant s, and then starts with the other consonant t. Okay, and for this other part of the phrase, notice that da ends with a t. Yeah, notice that ta, da ends with the t. And then begins with a K for ku. Dut ku. Meaning I am well. Chicks dit dut ku. So how does this help us? So if um, we know what Pawnee syllables can begin with and what Pawnee syllables can end with, how does it help us? Um, so if this is the case, then we could break all words in Pawnee into syllables to help us with our pronunciation. So <coughs> then we're just a few little tricks to help you out. But notice that when we write in Pawnee, um, we're not going to be writing words with syllable breaks because Pawnee words can already be really long and then that'll make them even more lengthy. Okay, so what is this? Okay. So here, here are some nouns, or tribal names, or band names. Um, Zach's going to start with the Skeety. I'm going to start with the or finish up with the South Bend, okay. and we'll go through them. So the first one. Okay, for the first one, we have body for Skeedy. South Bend, we have body, same word, meaning Pawnee. Next word, we have Chahix, see Chahix. And South Bend, we have Chahix, see Chahix, meaning Pawnee or Indian. Okay, for Skeedy, um, we have Skeedy. And in South Bend, we have Skeedy, meaning Skeedy, the Skeedy Bend. This next one, we have Joey. South Bend, too, we have Joey, meaning Chowie, the, the band. another south, uh, 
South Band Band. For this the next one we have Kitka Hockey. And then South Band we have Kitka Hockey. Kitka Hockey. Kitka Hockey. Yeah. Meaning the Kitka Hockey Band. And for the final band we have Pita Hawirata. And South Band Pita Pita Hawirata. Meaning Pita Hawirata Band. So here's some more tribal names um, close to our area. Um, again, we'll go Skeety first. Okay, for the first one, we have Basuhara. And it's the same for South Bend, Basuhara, meaning Oto. This next one for Skeety, we have uh, Bakuta. South Bend, Bakuta, meaning Iowa. Uh, next tribal name, Basasi. South Bend, Basasi, meaning Osage. Okay, for the next band or tribe, excuse me, we have Dehita. South Bend, Dehita, meaning Ponca. For the next one, <clears throat> we have Arahu. South Bend, Arahu, meaning Call. Uh, next tribal name, we have Tadekawa. South Bend Tadekawa, meaning Tonkawa. Next tribe, we have Sakiwa. South Bend Sakiwa, meaning Second Fox. Next tribe, Kirikuruks. South Bend Kirikuruks, as the Wichita tribe, meaning. Bear eyes. This first part, eyes. This next part, bear. That's what we call them. The Wichita people. Giddy Guruks. Uh, next tribe, we have Asudit. South Band is the same. Asudit, meaning Kadu. Uh, next tribe, Kaiwa. South Band, Kaiwa, meaning Kaiwa. Next tribe we have Rarita. South Band Rarita, meaning Comanche. Next tribal name we have Sahi. South Band Sahi, meaning Cheyenne. Next tribal name we have Sari Itika. South Band Sari Itika. Meaning Arapaho. Okay, and for this uh, next tribal name, <coughs> we have Jahikspahat. South Band Jahikspahat. This could be in any of the five civilized tribes. Okay, for this next tribe, which isn't really a tribe, it just means like an alien tribe or a stranger, we have. Jahik Supiru. South Ben Jahik Supiru. So these are the new sentences that we introduced earlier. It's just, we're going to go through them again and we're going to give the meaning in English. So the first one, Jikstit Kadaspari, meaning are you well? Second one, Jikstit uh, Karasku. Also meaning, are you well? So, right here, this is where we, again, only only part of this sentence that makes it South Bend or Skeety is this first part. So, a South Bend speaker could say, Ahu, Jikstit, Dutku, just like a Skeety speaker could say, How, Jikstit, Dutbuddy. So, I'll, I'll repeat myself. Uh, this first one, Ahu, Jikstit, Dutbuddy, meaning, yes, I am well. For the next one, how chikstit tatku, also meaning yes, I am well. Another response is no, I am not well. Gaki chikstit gakup buddy. Okay, this other response, gaki chikstit gakupku, also meaning no, I'm not well. 
So this one is the South Bend way of saying what is your name? Kirike Rasasa. Kirike Rasasa. And then we have two slight variations for skiri. We have Kiriki Rasasa. And then we have Kiki Rasasa. Both meaning what is your name? This next one is uh, my name is, and again I'll use my name, Datasa Taylor. Datasa Taylor. So going on to the next one, South Bend speakers. This is what asking what band are you or what tribe are you? Kirike da Saketa. Kirike da Saketa. And then again we have two <clears throat> very slight uh, variations for skidi we have kiriki rasakita and then we have kiki rasakita both meaning what band or tribe are you so this next one um i'm gonna say body meaning pony tatakita body tatakita body or you can say body te body te which means i am pony some useful phrases. Um, this first one is first one is South Bend, meaning I'll see you later. Gustucci edit. Gustucci edit. And then the second one, also meaning I'll see you later. Gustucci edit. Gustucci edit. This next word is I don't know. Kaka tadaita. I've also heard it, them, these two come together in kaka tadaita. But right here it's kaka tadaita. So this next part is um, for you to do at home. Um, it's just conversational pra practice. You pick a partner and you say, you ask each other on this next page. So what you want to get to with the partner, the first speaker is going to ask, are you well in Pawnee? And the speaker two is going to say, yes, I'm well, or no, I'm not well in Pawnee. And the first speaker is just going to acknowledge him. Same thing with what is your name? My name is, and then another acknowledgement. What is your tribe or band? Then you could say, tell them what band or tribe you are. Then acknowledge, and then both of them will say, I'll see you later. These are a few, uh, well, actually, one resource, a good use, useful resource um, to help your Pawnee language learning. Um, it's available to you if you have the internet, and it's uh, from the American Indian Studies Research Institute, also called AISRI, the acronym. Um, they have an online dictionary portal for both Skeedy um, Pawnee and South Bend Pawnee uh, words and phrases. However, um, I'll say that there is a lot more skeedy words and phrases um, available than there are South Bend Pawnee words and phrases. Also, South Bend Pawnee, um, there's no uh, audio clips available for South Bend, but on the other side for skeedy, there's there's a ton of them. And um, usually the speaker is, yeah, Miss uh, Nora Pratt. Um, another like useful little tip <clears throat> when you're using this um, resource, this AISRI resource dictionary portal, um, is the writing system. So Taylor and I are proposing a not entirely different writing system. It's um, very closely related to Dr. Parks's. However, if you're searching for words in Dr. Parks's online dictionary portal, you're going to need to write the words as he spells them. And the main difference is, is pretty simple. So <clears throat> double vowels. So Dr. Parks represents what Taylor and I are calling long vowels with um, double vowels. So an uh sound for Dr. Parks is just written with the A while the ah uh sound is written with an AA. And same thing for E eh is written with one E while the A sound is written with two E's. And then the I sound is going to be written with one I, while the E sound is going to be written with two I's. And for the U, the, the U, U will be written with one U, while U will be written with um, 
to use for Dr. Parks. So that's what we mean by double vowels. Um, so you do probably need to know Dr. Parks' writing system if you're looking at words, but that's really the only difference. Um, another very slight difference is that Taylor and I are using <clears throat> a slightly modified symbol for ch, and it's the C with the little diacritic on top, while Dr. Parks is only using C for the ch sound and the t sound. So them are really the only differences in the spelling systems because they're based off of how Pawnee's spoken, um, what you actually hear. So that's why they're so close. So right here are the equivalent writing systems for you. Um, I've already explained this, but this is just for your reference. And this final slide will have the the website that you could uh, look up these words, and you're <coughs> free to type that into your computer. Actually, I um, hope you do use this. It's a really good resource to use.